Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and this is the video you know had to happen, our long-term 2021 Tesla Model Y standard range against the 2021 Volkswagen ID4. Let's get into it. <music> Now, right off the bat, comparisons are tough. Why? Because we own this car. We are familiar with it. We know how everything works. We know its quirks. We know its ups and its downs. And it's hard to remove the familiarity aspect when getting into a new car for just a short amount of time. So I can remove my biases about good things and bad things about this car, but what I can't remove is my familiarity, the fact that I get in and I know exactly how to adjust the climate control, how to turn the radio on. It takes time to get used to how those things work in the Volkswagen, and there's only so much one can do to remove themselves and sort of get rid of that inherent comfortability bias. Now, because of that, I've gone through and I've actually made a list about good things and bad things about each car in order to try to break it down as objectively as possible. Now, I'll still share my thoughts, and we'll go for a little drive in both of them at the end, but. For any of you cross-shopping the cars or you're just EV enthusiasts, this should kind of help delineate the models. Now, if you care about a bunch of the specs, go ahead and find them elsewhere. This is not a specs video, but super high level, just what these two cars are. This is the all-new electric car from Volkswagen. This is in the rear-wheel drive first edition trim. We're packing one electric motor, about 250 miles of EPA range, and coming in about $46,000. This, as I said, is our long-term Tesla Model Y. We bought one of these standard range cars for the month and a half or so that they sold them. So we paid about well, $42,000 before destination for this one. However, you can only buy a Model Y long range now. They don't sell the standard range. And at least here on May 23rd, 2021, they cost about $52,000 before destination, an extra thousand dollars on top of that. So this is also rear wheel drive and has 244 miles of estimated range. If Tesla still made the standard range Model Y, these two would be dead on neck and neck. In fact, this one would be quite a little bit cheaper, especially considering what you can get. But the ID4 would start cheaper in the base model. So let's jump right on into it. We're gonna start off by comparing the absolute base trims of both of these cars. So not the first edition of the ID4, but the, the Pro model with one that starts at right around $40,000. And we're gonna compare that to the $52,000 base long range Model Y, which is the only one you can buy new from Tesla today. Interestingly, in completely base form, both cars cost the same in terms of dollar per mile of range. So you've got 250 miles of range in the ID4, about $40,000, and 326 miles of range in the long range Model Y at about $52,000, you take that asking price and you divide it by the miles of EPA estimated range and they come out right about the same. I think if I remember correctly, it's about $130 per mile of range. So starting off with the Model Y, what are the pros of getting that car? Well, for that $52,000 price, you're getting all wheel drive. Now, a lot of people see this as a perk. I could also see the appeal of being able to get real wheel drive in the ID4. If you live somewhere in a warmer climate where you're never gonna see snow, not a very high performance car, so you can get more efficiency with less weight and less moving and fewer moving parts by getting rear wheel drive. But ultimately, I would say getting all wheel drive or at least having that option, if you will, on the Model Y is arguably a pro. The sound system in the Model Y. Sound system's not bad on the ID4, but you're talking seven speakers versus 14 in the Model Y. And one of the best sound systems, especially in the EV game versus Eh, an okay sound system. So absolutely Model Y better sound system. Another thing in the Model Y is you're getting a frunk. Let's go ahead and pop that open here. I can do that using the app, super quick and easy. Very large space, it's hard plastic, so very easy to clean. And it's, and it's useful for things like, for example, you can see Alyssa's boots are in here. They stay in there for any time she's doing something dirty and she wants to keep them separate from the rest of groceries or anything like that. We've also used it for things like if the back of the car is full with a large object, say a mountain bike or something, I can still fill the front up, pick up some groceries or take some returnables or just 
anything else you might need to do. The Volkswagen, ugh, no frunk. You are getting drivetrain components and, and a more car type thing. So pretty objectively an advantage for the Tesla. The charging network, as, as it stands today in 2021, the Tesla supercharging network is superior to anything that the ID4 can hook up to. Now, yes, the Electrify America network is robust. You can also use the ChargePoint network, EVgo. There are more CC1 compatible chargers in the world. That being said, they don't work as well as Tesla's network. Tesla will automatically route to any supercharger you know is going to work properly, you know is going to provide you a fast amount of charge. There's going to be minimum six to eight charging stations there. So even if there are a few other Teslas charging, you're still going to be good to go. You could pull up to a row of Electrify America stations in this and have eight chargers and be good to go. Or you could pull up to an EVgo charger that only provides 50 kilowatts max and there's one charger there and it's currently being used. So while the network is growing and there are objectively more charging stations at level three available for the Volkswagen, nothing works as well and as smoothly as the Tesla supercharging network. Not only that, but I noticed this earlier while I was driving the ID4. Check this out. And this happened with the Topher up at with the Mustang Mach E as well. Let's go to navigation. Right here, I'm notified of a charger. Oh, look at that. 50 kilowatts. That would be a good one to hook up to. Level three. Okay, well, I'll go hit it up and I'll go charge there. Er, wrong. This is the American Center for Mobility, and it's completely gated off. There's no way I could just pull up there as some scrub and say, hey, can I charge my Volkswagen? It's not going to happen. The Topher had a lot of that with the Mach-E when he was trying to find chargers. They'd show up on the Mustang's map, and then he'd go to them, and you wouldn't actually be able to use it. It'd be restricted. At this point, Volkswagen does not hold a candle to Tesla's supercharging network. Next, the Tesla screen is just better than the Volkswagen screen. There's no way around it. What I mean by better is the responsiveness, the feel, and in some cases size does matter. This Volkswagen screen feels more like a conventional car touchscreen. There are small delays, refresh rate isn't fantastic. It's not super smooth. It doesn't feel like you're touching your smartphone. It feels like you're touching a very durable display. And don't get me wrong, there are good things about that. And you could argue that the screen will probably function longer and be more durable than the Tesla screen. But for daily use, there is nothing like that's the screen. <laughs> Look at that. I got the car on camp mode right now, and that's what it shows. That is hilarious. I've never seen that. Anyway, look how quickly we're right back to what we're doing. Everything you touch in this. Look at that refresh rate. I'm getting it filthy wet with my fingers. Pinch to zoom works so nicely. Oh, my goodness. I can bring up anything, and it's all quick. It's all responsive. It feels like you're using your touch screen on your smartphone. You can argue that you like the functionality better of the Volkswagen screen, but you can't argue that this isn't nicer to use. While we're talking screens, a big part of owning an EV is unfortunately sitting and charging, especially if you're road tripping. What Tesla does is they provide you things to do while you're charging. You have this whole entertainment section. You got games built right in. Not only that, but the theater. Hugely important to be able to pull up Netflix or YouTube and actually watch a show or a movie or something like that while you're sitting and charging. Just the other week, for example, Alyssa and I went on a four hour road trip with my mother and while we stopped to charge, the three of us sat in the car and watched a cool YouTube video that my mother had been talking about and we were entranced for the 15, 20 minutes that we waited to charge. It was neat, it was dark outside, so all the lights dimmed down and we had this huge screen and great sound system to watch this video. And then after it was done, we had enough charge and we continued on our way. Now, yes, you can obviously bring tablets or use your smartphones, and for a lot of cases, that's perfectly fine. But that's just another thing you're getting with Tesla. Now, this one is much more minor, but I like being able to fold down the seats from the cargo area in the Tesla. So, I want to fold down that left seat. Ooh, that sounded harsh. Fold down that one, pull that piece of cake, then I load something in. I actually fit bicycles in the back of both of these cars this week and they've got pretty similarly sized cargo compartments the id4 is a little bit smaller than the model y but it's not too significant the id4 not only do i have this that i gotta take out but you gotta reach forward to drop the seats like that super minor definitely not a huge deal but something that the tesla does well 
Another thing you get with the base Tesla is four window switches. I would never think that Tesla would actually be on the pro side of having physical functionality, but there you go. One, two, three, four window switches on the driver's door. In the ID4, you have two. Now, how do you operate all four windows, you ask? Well, you touch that rear button for a moment and then you control the rear windows and then you touch it again and you're controlling the fronts. It's minor, it's not that hard to get used to once you know how to use it, but come on. There's some, it's just something to be said about having four window switches. Base car to base car, the ID4 does not have a panoramic sunroof, the Model Y does. The deep rear storage well. In the ID4, you get some underfloor storage. Pull this up, you got all that space for charger or jumper cables or blankets or something. And then you actually do have a little bit of an under storage as well. So it's, it's pretty decent, so this isn't a huge deal. But in the Model Y, you've got deep center wells. So these go way down. You can see I've got a football in this one hanging out. And then you pull this up, huge area for groceries or bags or all sorts of things. And you can see in this one, it's where we store our charger, some Aldi bags, some towels, and an umbrella. One pedal driving. Now this is a big deal for me. This is one of the ones I have starred. The ID4 will give you regen when you let off the pedal, but it's not particularly strong and it will not bring the car to a complete stop. This is a big deal because one pedal driving is very nice. Whether you prefer it or not, once you get used to not having to use the brake pedal in most situations, it is a superior way to drive. The Model Y has very strong regen. When you let off the throttle, it transitions nicely from acceleration to deceleration, and then will bring you all the way to a stop, hold you there with the parking brake, depending on your settings, or you can actually turn on a creep forward mode if you want that more traditional feel, and then carry on your way. So it's nice that Tesla offers that. The self-driving suite is better in the Model Y, even stock car to stock car. You get base autopilot with this car, you get uh, travel assist on the ID4. They both work pretty well, but the ID4 you have to give more effort into the steering wheel. So even if you have your hand resting on it, it'll still prompt you to move the wheel, even if you're paying attention and driving along. The Model Y is more confidence inspiring, although they are pretty close. Two wireless chargers in the Model Y. This one's small, but still a nice thing, especially if you're road tripping with two people, because realistically, you don't often need your phone charger if you're not taking a road trip. Slap the phones right on there, there's two spots to do it. ID4 only has one. The weight, the shorter range rear wheel drive ID4 weighs just about as much as the long range all wheel drive Model Y. There's no getting around it, that thing is heavy. And then speed. That's making about 200 horsepower. I think the long range Model Y dual motor is making something in the mid threes. And even in this standard range format, you got 5.3 seconds, zero to 60. This thing feels strong and it continues to feel strong all the way up well over highway speeds. The ID4 is peppy, but it's certainly not fast. You get leather in the base long range Model Y, you get cloth in the ID4. Power seats, you also get power driver and passenger seats in the base Model Y. You do not get that with the ID4. And the speed at which the steering wheel turns. I'll demonstrate that when we get on the road, but this takes exactly one turn from center to full lock in one direction. That takes one and three quarters turns, so almost double. And what happens is if you're making a sharp right or left turn, you have to almost do a double motion in the ID4, whereas this is kind of just like, and then back. Now, before you guys start roasting me, that everything's going for the Tesla, hang on and listen to what the ID4 does better, base car to base car. Ambient lighting, you get ambient lighting in the ID4, and not only that, very good ambient lighting. It looks cool, and so many manufacturers could learn from Volkswagen in that you can pick any color of the rainbow. That looks awesome. Tesla's got no sort of ambient lighting, it's a very bland cabin. Windshield wiper controls, again, such a simple concept, just like the light switches, but flipped in the other direction, you actually have a stock for your windshield wipers in the Volkswagen. Now yes, the Model Y does have auto wipers and they work okay as auto wipers do. You can also touch the end of the wiper stock and do a one-time swipe. And you can go on the center screen and adjust specific windshield wiper settings, but it's one of those controls that it's just easier to have a physical control. The dealership network, whether you like dealers or not, whether you like Volkswagen or not, you have to agree that there are many more dealers that you could take your ID4 to 
whether you wanted to buy one, whether you need to get it serviced, whether you wanted to trade it in, whether you just wanted to buy an accessory or something. The Tesla, the Tesla service center network is growing, but you can't argue against having such a vast dealership network like Volkswagen. The car comes with a key. What a concept, right? Having a real physical key to use for your car. It has buttons. It will go in your pocket. It will go on a keychain. The Tesla, you have to pay extra to get a key. Now, it works very well to just use your phone as a key and you get two little key cards that you can put in your wallet. So personally, I don't really care that we don't have a key, but you gotta admit, with the Volkswagen, you do get a real key. I mentioned this earlier, but you can get a rear wheel drive ID4. I like being able to have the option because for me, all wheel drive isn't too big of a deal. And if I lived somewhere like Florida or Arizona, I would hate to have to pay more and have more weight to get all wheel drive. I like being able to get a rear wheel drive car. The wheels, somehow Volkswagen managed to get decent range in their car with good looking aluminum wheels. They look good and they look decently aerodynamic. With Tesla, you have to have these tacky plastic wheel covers and yes, you could take them off, but then you lose a little bit of efficiency. So you're like, eh, might as well leave them on, especially for longer road trips. Somebody like me, who's more function over form, but I would like to have real wheels. Volkswagen costs less. There's no getting around it. While Tesla is only selling the long range all wheel drive model, you can get into an ID4 for way less. And that's a big pool of buyers that just straight up could not afford a Model Y that can perfectly reasonably get themselves into a base ID4. This thing is quiet. The Model Y is not a quiet car. It must have less sound deadening to save weight. The roof reflects a ton of noise. It's a loud car in there. You get a lot of road reverberation. The wind noise isn't too bad, but there's a lot of echo effect. It's just a, a loud car. This ID4 is remarkably quiet. Unfortunately, we didn't get a good sound reading out on our highway tests, but I can tell you it's significantly quieter than that thing. Ride comfort as well is significantly better in the ID4. The Model Y has very aggressive rebound damping and it feels good to toss it around. It's good for sporty, smooth road type of driving, but when you live in the great mitten state of Michigan and you're dealing with potholed, broken roads, there's nothing like having a good, supple suspension on the ID4. You're not getting that with the Model Y. No beep to change lanes with the autopilot on. This is big, guys. I get so frustrated when just driving along, use an autopilot, and then you come up on a semi-truck and you have to hold down the blinker and hear boom, boom, and get around the vehicle and then get back over and re-engage it, boom, boom. What if you're in the middle of a conversation, you don't wanna interrupt your passenger, or what if you're listening to a good song and it has to drop the volume down and raise it back up? The ID4, just like every other car that's got some sort of self-driving suite, you just change lanes. You put your blinker on and you do it. It disables itself. Once you get in a new lane, it comes back on. Three years of free Electrify America charging. If you road trip a lot, that can really add up. Now you do have to stay within the Electrify America network, but there are quite a lot of those. If you do things right and get a referral code when you buy a Tesla, you can get a thousand miles, quote unquote, of free supercharging, equals out to about a hundred bucks or so. But depending on how much you road trip, three years is definitely gonna go longer. Blind spot monitoring. The ID4 has traditional blind spot monitoring, even in its base trim. The Model Y has a blind spot warning. If somebody's in your blind spot and you go to merge, the radar will pick up on it and yell at you, but you don't have the little indicators on the mirrors. It's nice to have that in the ID4. The turning radius in the ID4 is awesome. It's one of the best turning radiuses of any car on the market. I'm really impressed by that. The Model Y's turning radius is horrendous. So that's base car to base car. $40,000 ID4 versus $52,000 long range Model Y. That's what you're getting pros for both. Now, what about when you start adding on a few options? Pros to the ID4. When you step up to the S model, you can get a panoramic sunroof with a cover, something that you cannot get on the Model Y. The ID4, you're actually getting a cover for the panoramic sunroof. And I love that because there are a lot of times when I could definitely do not want the sun beaming in on me, even though it's shaded and even though it blocks a ton of UV, I just, I'd rather not have the sun open my eyes and the ID4, you just swipe a button and then it closes. You get adaptive lights in the ID4. So when you go around a corner, the lights actually swivel and illuminate the road that you're turning onto. I think that's pretty neat. And a hands-free lift gate. Let's see if it works right now. I should be able to just kick my foot under there. 
maybe. Hey, there you go. You will walk away a little bit and close that. That's a nifty SUV feature and something that you cannot get in the Model Y. Now, what about for the Model Y's optional upgrades? Well, for $10,000, you can get the full self-driving beta suite. That eliminates the frustration of having to turn the autopilot off when you're changing lanes. You just tap the signal, it'll drive around, and eventually it will be able to drive you around on all sorts of streets. Just put in a navigation destination and it'll drive you along. Is that worth $10,000? Well, that's for you to decide, but it is something you can get with the Tesla. Also, colors. Surprisingly, you can get more color options on the Model Y than the ID4. The ID4 comes in either blue or grayscale. The Model Y, you've got blue, grayscale, or red. Performance upgrades for both of the cars. The Model Y, you can upgrade to either the full-blown performance model, so you're getting at bigger brakes, more powerful motors, some different suspension and other upgrades, or you can just get the stealth model, as they call it, where you just get a standard dual motor Model Y, and then you can pay, I think it's like two or $3,000, and get upgraded performance out of your base car. That turns it into a really, really fast machine. Now the ID4, you will be able to upgrade to all wheel drive and that will make more power, but it's also gonna add more weight. So it's definitely not gonna be the rocket ship type of speed that you can get with the Tesla. And lastly, for the Model Y, you can get a third row. This is a really big deal for some people who've got larger families or maybe they just have two kids and they want to be able to take two of their kids' friends sometimes. It's tight, but you can fit a third row in the Model Y, option it to go right there. It's definitely not something you're gonna get with the ID4. So that's what you get with the ID4 and the Model Y. Let's hop in the driver's seat of both, do a quick loop, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. The ID4, you've got nice, easy to use door handle buttons. Let's see some of this neat ambient lighting. Fairly functional interior. Good cup holders, move that. Shifter, you rotate and then rotate again for regen regenerative braking. You can hear the whirring come to life. You get an artificial sound when you drive this car. Open up the panoramic sunroof. Power adjustable steering column. That's something you get in the Model Y as well. Why is that a big deal? Well, when you swap drivers regularly, as we do with the Model Y, you can simply press the memory and the steering wheel changes as well. So I'm gonna leave some sections of this quiet, just to kind of allow you to hear the car. It does add a little bit more regen as I get on the brake. You can see the little regen power meter going right there on the screen. We're decelerating. throttle right there. Actually got a little traction control warning light. Let's see if we can take off in front of this car. Again, full throttle, 55. Now if you're just in drive mode, not in B, there's no regen whatsoever when you get off the pedal. So just coasting along and as an electric vehicle with minimal drag, it'll coast for a long time. Seats are comfortable. The infotainment takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, it's really not too bad as long as it's loading up properly and quickly. Here are these ambient light controls I was telling you about. Look at this. Bam, everything's purple. Not only is it purple around the car, but the screen is as well. The dome lights are on rheostat, so you can actually hold it down and dim it. I think that's pretty neat. That's something you don't see really outside of luxury vehicles. Some people like having a little cluster right in front. I don't think it's a huge deal. It's not really hard to look over to the side. I mean, you gotta look over to the side to get the time or the temperature on this car, so not really any different to look over and get speed, but I understand some people are more comfortable with that. These aren't huge bumps, but here's one. Ah, oh, takes that so well. Remarkably little of that impact is transferred into the cabin. Volkswagen did a really great job with that. Do you have a few different drive modes? They're all about the same. This car is not that fast and it's kind of always economical. So eh, I don't know, pick one, go for it. I'm gonna pull in here and demonstrate a few things. First of all, I'm going to make a turn right when I hit this grate. So that's essentially one full turn I needed to make to get into this lot. So it required me 
doing a little bit of a handover. But the flip side of that is, as I mentioned earlier, the turning radius is awesome in this car. So I'm going to pull into this spot. And I'm going to turn the wheel all the way to the left and do 180 degrees and see where I get to. Look at that. I can get just two parking spots over and one back and I'm completely turned around. Do the same thing again. Right back into the spot. I mean, that's a really, really impressive turning radius. I know the interior materials are made to a price point. This is very clearly just plastic, but I honestly don't mind it. It's functional. It looks decent. So much of that is subjective anyway. All right, directly into the Y. Park. Stupid door handles. Shout out to Bouge RV. We got some heavy duty all weather floor mats coming in handy today with my wet feet. Put on the brakes, starts up the car. Mercedes column shifter. Actually gonna put the steering wheel up so that you guys can see that a little better. The car just switched itself into night mode. Here, every little bump we go over is transmitted into a an echoey resonant sound through the cabin. I was able to quell that a little bit by adjusting the lift gate and making it sit a little tighter against the car, but still it's this is a loud vehicle. But you don't get any of that artificial noise, so that's kind of nice. I'm not using the brake pedal at all right now. Coming nice and slow for this speed bump. Speed back up. You hear noise from the electric motor, but nothing artificial. Car comes to a complete stop, and then <laughs> really take off. And it continues to pull too. That's the impressive thing is a lot of electric vehicles are snappy right off the line, but Teslas just keep going. Let's see how much simpler it is in here. Some people like the simplicity. They like the minimalism. Some people think it just looks like a toy. That's kind of up to you. Much quicker steering. Rack. Oh my gosh, your neck gets sore from that acceleration. Let's see what happens when we go over this drain cover again. You can hear it and you can feel it. In fact, you actually don't feel it as much as you think, but we as humans, when we hear that sound and it sounds harsh to us, we get turned off. We think it's rough. When a lot of times it's just, it's just the sound. It's not that it's actually being transferred through the cabin, but the ID4 definitely does ride better. All right, pulling in here. This actually is about three quarters of a turn, so I suppose you still have to make a pretty good amount of turn to get this car around. Where were we, was it? It was this one, right? Yeah. So, come to a stop. I'm actually a little cockeyed, aren't I? There we go. Turn the wheel all the way, and... Barely make... It looks like three parking spots. So it's like a whole extra spot on a full lock turn. For a rear wheel drive car, the Model Y just has a remarkably shallow turning circle. Park and out. So my thoughts on the cars. If you can afford it, if you can afford to step up to the long range Model Y, I would take the Model Y. I also feel if Tesla brings back the standard range car, it's a no-brainer. This car is more special and provides more of a unique ownership experience, and it thinks more outside the box into what driving can be as an electric vehicle. It's more fun to drive, it's more engaging, 
and it's a more unique ownership experience. That being said, the ID4 rides better, it's quieter, and it's more conventional despite its quirky things that it has going on inside. It's, it's still a German car through and through. And at the end of the day, you're getting, uh, you're, you're getting Volkswagen's electric vehicle. It definitely feels like that. So I know that was a lot. I hope it was at least as objective as I can be being a Model Y owner. I like the ID4. I like electric vehicles in general, but I would pick a Mach-E or a Model Y over this. Or a Chevy Bolt, actually, especially the older Bolt, because I think it looks better than the new one. So thank you all so much for watching. If you want to see more on the Model Y, I'll put the playlist in the description. And if you want to see more on the ID4, we've got a range test. Also with the Model Y, where it, the Model Y did better, but this has a longer range because it has a bigger battery. And we have a test of the sound system as well. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Thank you.